everybody, it's Tyler here at the Northeast Wisconsin Signature Event, checking in with 5062 Zeno Fox coming right here, a local team. Absolutely phenomenal season this year, a great season last year as well too. So this is definitely a team you really have to be watching. Let's take a look at the robot, lots to offer with this. One of the things Zeno Fox really been iterating on is actually their methodology of how they're approaching this game. So not a ton of changes from the robot over the season, but a great intake. You know I love the wide intakes on the robot. A lot of other things too, we'll be covering their wings, how they're approaching their uh, drive train with a bunch of different sleds on it, talking about their kicker mechanisms, and a couple sensors. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Sam, let's start off this road. We're going to go to that bottom up here. Talk about the drivetrain on it. You're doing a couple of cool things in regards to your wheel config. I noticed some sleds on there as well, too. Yep. So walk me through your drivetrain and what is it, what it's comprised of. Yeah, so one of the first things we kind of um, decided on with our drivetrain is we wanted to um, have lots of traction as we're getting over the barrier. So one way we did that is uh, we used these 3.25-inch Omni wheels on the outside, so that way during the match we can drift around the field, move around really quickly. But then we also wanted lots of traction get over the barrier, so we use these smaller 2.75 inch wheels in the center. Um, those are not actually, um, those are actually not uh, contacting the ground when we're normally driving around in the field, but they really help getting over the barrier. Um, another thing we kind of did then is uh, we move on to sleds to kind of help it also move over the barrier. So we have these front and rear sleds um, that are at a 45 degree angle, kind of tangent to the profile of the wheel there. So that kind of helps us get up on the on the barrier, and then um, so that way when we're driving over the barrier, so we don't grind the gears and stuff like that, and we get over nice and smoothly. We use these uh, the sheet of right here that's uh, parallel to the ground, which um, that'll help us get over real smoothly. Uh, how it does that is instead of a lot of teams will have like it being perpendicular to the ground, which is a really small pressure point, but as it's on its side there, parallel to the ground, it evens out that pressure, makes it nice and smooth. Um, when did you make those changes on your drivetrain over the course of the season? Uh, it kind of was uh, towards the beginning of the season when we oh, were designing wow. the drivetrain, actually, because we kind of worked this robot from the ground up, actually. Um, so as we were designing the drivetrain, we kind of decided on adding some of the boats and stuff, boats and sleds on there uh, to do that. And I know we'll be talking more about match strategy as we kind of go through yeah. here, but I think one of the things I, I love about your team is that, you know, so many robots I've talked to, they do complete rebuilds for things. Yeah. And really the way this meta has evolved is that you can keep what you have and just change that strategy for it. What is maybe a major strategy that you've seen change here at the Wisconsin event? Um, one really interesting strategy I've seen is uh, completely blocking off the match load zones from the opponents so that way they cannot match load at all. So you'll get up by just a slight amount in points and then you'll put your wings out and stuff in front of the match load zones in front of the bars so that way they can't touch the bars and then they can't get any balls to score and then it's kind of just starving the opponent of balls to score. Let's keep going through the other capabilities you're about. Talk about your uh, wings that you have as well too. Andrew's going to cover more about that. So Andrew, uh, let's deploy those wings out. Talk to me more about uh, how you uh, ended up uh, creating these. All right, yeah. So the wings that we have are both powered by pistons and there are sheets of plexiglass uh, both coming off of the wings and the way that they're uh, mounted they actually like stay above the barrier of the field so that when we are trying to do the uh, AWP we are able to get that tri ball from over the match load bar um, and then the other thing is that the wing that we mainly use the wings for is uh, pushing tri balls around the field so when they're extended the wings almost double like the total width of our robot that way, we're able to uh, we're able to push the goal, push the tri balls into the goal easier, and do that a lot more efficiently. I noticed on the other side of wings, you have this uh, cutout here for this uh, bar sticking out. Can you just talk about uh, that process there? Uh, yeah. So uh, after we had developed the wings, we wanted to make a system that allowed us to uh, balance on the barrier bar. So we added this arm, but in order to keep the wings uh, from folding in on themselves, we had to cut out a little notch. 
That way the wings can come around that bar and we can still use that on our robot. As we continue on this robot here, I think one of the key features is that intake, Alex. So talk to me more about uh, what's going into it. I love the super wide intakes that we have. Uh, talk to me about uh, the use of uh, squish wheels for it and just overall how it's worked because you have so much control on the field. It's great to see. This is probably one of the most important aspects of our uh, game strategy is to just move tri balls around very quickly. Uh, we opted for a wide intake um, and it doesn't intake into the shooter so we can quickly intake tri balls and then we don't need to uh, push them out, we can just outtake them and it launches them over the barrier very nicely. Um, and when we, when we want to match load, we can drive up on the match load bar, put a uh, tri ball in the intake and then uh, do whatever we want with that, whether we want to put it in the goal or just push it over to our uh, teammate. And then uh, to make it easier to uh, push tri balls into the goal, we added uh, little boats here to help guide it because we had some issues before we added this of it would just hit the uh, goal then it would get entangled in the net so these help for a nice smooth transfer from it being under its own weight to uh, being on top of the goal and then uh, for the chain here we added uh, two sets of chain just for redundancy make sure it doesn't break during a match so uh, it continues to work. Uh, overall, when we talked a little bit about match strategy, you know, one of the things I've seen the change in the meta is that much more going either just the uh, one tri ball or a bowling strategy, right, versus going with a, a catapult kicker. Are you uh, finding that you're also going that path as well too here at the um, Wisconsin Insure event? Yeah, I think we're the match strategy is definitely changing. A little bit more control of the tri balls is uh, definitely important, and uh, just being able to make sure that as soon as you get the match load, you have full control of it. Because earlier season, when teams would shoot them over the barrier, it's really easy for a team with some wide wings uh, and sleds on those to push them over, and that's all of your points gone. So it definitely is important to keep control. While the game has changed a lot, you do need that uh, kicker for the skills uh, matches as well too, Noah. So talk to me about what your uh, your catapult kicker area has been doing. And then you got a couple sensors you want to point out as well too on this robot. Tell yeah, me more. Yeah, for sure. So the kicker is one of the things that we kind of uh, started from the beginning of the season. We uh, always had the idea of in, in mind of just shooting balls over pretty quickly with a catapult kind of mechanism. Um, so this kicker hasn't gone through too much uh, different iterations um, since the beginning of this robot. But we have uh, tuned the uh, kicker aspect and less the catapult. We started out uh, having the idea in mind of just shooting tri balls over robots with a high arc. But uh, like Tyler was saying, the game strategy has changed a lot since the start of the season. So we're not really shooting that much in the match anyways. We're kind of more match loading into the intake like uh, Sam and Alex were talking about. Um, and then we have these rubber links up here. Um, this is where the uh, uh, match loads will go during skills, uh, specifically during skills. We'll put them in there, and they're at an angle. Uh, the there's, yeah, there's we have a tri ball right here. They're going like that, and then I don't know if I can kick it. Can you catch it, Andrew? Yeah, we'll just shoot it like that. Um, before we use this limit switch uh, to make sure the catapult would go down to the right height. It's right here. That just catches the catapult at the right height to stop it. Um, but now we just have the button to move the catapult at a constant speed as long as you're holding it. Um, and that kind of helps us go as fast as we possibly can during skills matches. Um, Are you only shooting from uh, one arc or do you have uh, a couple multiple arcs for uh, skills? Yeah, so we just shoot from the one arc for skills, but we have the option to shoot with the catapult gotcha. if that's necessary in matches. We don't really find that necessary in skills, however, because the grouping is a lot better with um, this arc. Yeah, it's so much quicker too, right? Yeah, for sure. And then we also uh, use these gloves. Um, Alex and Sam are the main match loaders. We made a quick stop at Walmart last night because we tried some other team's gloves and we found they were a lot more effective than we had, the gloves we had tried earlier. And uh, we were able to get 150 programming skills um, using these gloves today. All right, let's look here. So these are the uh, Cutters Certifies SFIA Meets. Do you know what the brand name of these are called or anything? I think Cutters. Cutters, cutters. Yeah. all right. So I guess Walmart Cutters gloves, that's, that's yeah. where to get Walmart's them. Walmart's the that. way to go, man. Um, okay, and then for our programming skills, um, we use Lemlib for all of our programming and autonomous runs. Um, we switched over that to that halfway through the season from Easy Template. We found it's a lot um, easier to implement um, more complicated runs that are longer and move across the field more because uh, it has global position tracking with the with the motor encoders, so that way we always know where we are on the field and error doesn't really accumulate during the match. We use our inertial sensor, which is right in the middle, uh, at the bottom of, uh, near to the bottom of the robot. We, uh, over time, uh, we've noticed that it's better to have it at the bottom of the robot rather than uh, higher up on a point because there's a lot less vibrations that the inertial sensor has to go through. 
Um, and then also with just like center of gravity kind of stuff, you want to help me tip the robot back a little bit. Um, we also have the battery and the brain real low down. Um, that's helped us a lot with getting over the barrier. And then also to get over the barrier, um, we have the tank on the front here. Um, that kind of just helps us go over the barrier smoothly. Um, and then that's really just ballast, right? You're not even, it's not even hooked up to anything? Yeah, all, right, all cool. ballast. Well, actually, no, this one, this one is oh, our it main is. Okay. pneumatic tank. Right. Yeah. Um, at the start of the season, we did have a, a tank just for balance, but now we actually can make some use of it. Um, and then our limit switch, uh, we don't use that anymore, but it's still there just in case we ever want to. And then our other sensor is the potentiometer auton selector. Shout out to uh, Ben and Logan from 515R on uh, their spin-up team. Um, they showed that off in their robot explanation video and we are using it. It kind of, you see the test number, it's just the, the auton that we've selected. We have the option to have 10 autons, um, just in case we get to that many um, ever in the season. And that way we can just tune autons really quickly by picking the number that we want um, for the auton that we're tuning right now. And then we can just run that over and over again using the, the V5 controller, uh, the time to match feature on that. Um, and yeah. Well, Xenofox is looking absolutely phenomenal here at the Wisconsin St. Drew event. We can't wait to see, of course, how you perform here. It's so looking forward to big things, but good luck the rest of the season as well, too. And thanks for taking the time to tell us more about your team. We appreciate it, guys.